This is John Jalam GNHV, your number one home of politics. Subscribe. I think before I make, just hold on, before I make uh, uh, some remarks, I have listened very carefully to the leaders who have spoken, and each one of them has spoken passionately um, about the future of our country as it should be. But let me ask uh, my deputy to make a few remarks so that I can conclude. Mr. Deputy President. Your Excellency, our President, Dr. William Ruto, Your Excellency, the former Prime Minister, Your Excellency, the former Vice President, the leadership of our two houses, members of the executive, and the press, Your Excellency, this is a great morning for this country because the constitution of the IBC is a great step for our democracy. I want to thank you for the leadership that you have accorded this country in difficult times, and you are acceding to have the report that was bipartisan is a great step in the right direction in this country. In the situation we are in, we want to call upon the people of Kenya that violence begets violence. Now that the president has accepted to have a discussion with our young population, with our leaders, we call upon the people of Kenya to give dialogue a chance to give consultation a chance, get off the streets, stay away from destruction of property, because Kenya is greater than all of us. And I think, Your Excellency, you have the capacity to lead us in that direction where there is consultation, and all Kenyans are able to agree on the way forward. With those few remarks, it's my duty to ask Your, President, Your Excellency to address the country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Deputy President. Um, Your Excellencies, um, Mr. Vice President, former Prime Minister, former <coughs> Vice President, the two speakers of our National Assembly and Senate, leaders of majority, uh, fellow leaders present here, um, welcome to this occasion. The National Dialogue Committee, established last year, resulted from the closing of ranks across the political divide to forge consensus on a number of priority national issues, including the reconstitution of the IEBC. Today's ascent of the IEBC Amendment Bill, therefore, marks a significant step in the actualization of one of the recommendations of NATCO and testifies to our country's ability to navigate difficult, complex, and sometimes divisive issues that could undermine our national co cohesion, undermine our stability and security if we leave it unattended. The signing of this bill paves way for the establishment of the selection panel for the appointment of IEBC commissioners. The IEBC remains a cornerstone of our democracy, responsible for overseeing regular elections at various levels, and on the overall, ensuring that our electoral cycle is managed transparently and administered in an impartial, neutral, efficient, accurate, and accountable manner. I concur with leaders who have said there must be professionalism and integrity as part of the cardinal principles of the men and women who will be charged with the responsibility of overseeing our elections. The spirit of NASCO is the spirit of unity, bipartisanship, and consensus building, values which have helped our nation overcome its most challenging moments. Even as I ascend to this bill, I look forward to supporting and facilitating any other outputs 
of the national consensus that was NATCO to ensure that Kenya moves forward and with as many hands on deck as is possible. The leadership of parliament, both on the majority and minority sides, have heard what the leaders here have said, and they should produce, uh, proceed with dispatch and expedite the other recommendations that are contained in the NATCO report and process the necessary uh, bills and interventions that are necessary for us to actualize the output of that report. Beyond NATCO, we are currently engaged in discussions as a country about our economy. As we know, the country has faced a series of economic shocks, including COVID-19 pandemic, globally high interest rates, and devastating droughts and floods, events which have impacted negatively on our economy and our capacity to secure resources for development and to also meet our debt service obligations. In the last two years, we have put in our best efforts to mobilize domestic and external resources to accelerate our economic program, pull the country back from the danger of debt distress, and set us on a path of economic transformation. These efforts have strengthened the Kenya shilling, reduced fuel prices at the pump, and lowered the cost of living, including the cost of essential household commodities. This year, my administration presented revenue-raising measures through the Finance Bill 2024, which were aimed at not only consolidating the economic recovery program, but also propelling the country to the next phase of investing in key social and economic infrastructure projects to advance our development agenda and reduce on our debt burden. However, many voices expressed disapproval of these proposals, leading me to drop the bill and terminate the process. It therefore means that apart from the people of Kenya asking us to consider alternative means of raising revenue, which I agree with, there is general consensus that the country requires to confront and address long-standing priority national issues, including national debt, public expenditure, and anti-corruption measures, so as to release resources for creating opportunities, creating jobs, and creating wealth. <clears throat> as a way of charting the future from the current situation we are facing, I welcome all the leaders here and I have heard what they have said this morning. And all other stakeholders working together for us to address the current economic situation through a broad-based political arrangement and to rally the country forward, as has been said by the former Prime Minister. And therefore, we have yet another opportunity as a country, Kenya being the resilient people we always are, to come together and figure out the future of our country in a manner that makes sure that we address the existential challenges and threats that face our nation. Uh, and that's the reason why I set up a committee to work and audit our debt, for us to interrogate our expenditure, and for us to work on anti-corruption. I want to encourage Parliament to expedite the conflict of interest bill that will support our anti-corruption measures, especially in relation to public officers. And I am hopeful that these are some of the conversations that we will be engaged in going forward. I am very confident that, as always, Kenya knows how to pull together, and leaders know how to come together in the best interest, not, on individu not of individuals, not of parties, 
but the collective body of the Kenyan people. And I look forward to working with leaders, as I have said, going forward on a broad-based political mechanism that will see us steer the country to the future. Thank you very much uh, to all the leaders here, Asante Nisana, to the people of Kenya. Uh, wish you well, and God bless our great country. Asante.